Welcome to Elected. I'm your host, Luke Radel, and apparently I'm also how Claudia Tenney finds her coat. I thought I lost my coat, and I went back and uh, had to find, I had one of my staffers find Luke's video so I could see if I had my coat in my hand when I left, so it was useful. Okay. I, I, <laughs> see, if only she had just stopped talking about me right there instead of going on for another 10 minutes. It has been a mad dash for the finish line in the race for MY22 as Anthony Brindisi seeks to reach out to African-American voters and moderates in the suburbs while Claudia Tenney calls me a prima donna and a diva on talk radio. And this is what's happened in the age of social media. You have people who grab a camera and the me they are the news. They're uh, prima donnas, they're divas. It's he's all a, about them. He's a, it's he's all a, about getting clicks. It's all about getting attention. You're talking about a and junior I, I in high school here. Yeah. I Honestly, I can't promise you that I'm not going to talk about that interview again, but I can promise you that I am not not going to talk about it again. So hopefully that provides some clarity. Obviously, I'm being facetious, and in this video, I'm only going to be talking about issues and policies that matter to you, the voters. Unlike Claudia Tenney, who spent 20 minutes yelling in Bill Keeler's ear about me. Uh, again, why isn't Luke talking about all the other... Why isn't he talking about the nursing home issue? Why isn't he See, now you're talking about Luke. Forget Luke. Let's leave, him, let's leave Luke what, out of it. Yeah, sorry about that, Bill. I mean, seriously, there are just so many clips that I could use to make fun of Claudia in this video. And I will. But you know what? It's just such a mistake on her part. I mean, obviously, she doesn't like me. Can't imagine why. But if she doesn't want to give me attention, then why talk about me for so long? I'm starting to think she got the NRA endorsement by repeatedly shooting herself in the foot. Now, after all these jokes, you might be asking yourself, Luke, what is Claudia Tenney doing spending so much time talking about you? Or as Congressman Anthony Brindisi put it. You know, if, if I'm a listener sitting back listening to this, I'm thinking to myself, what the heck does this have to do with the problems that I'm facing? Thanks, Tony. But the answer might just lie in the issue that we're going to be talking about today, which is health care. Because surprisingly, when the candidates aren't talking about me, it gets a lot worse for them. Healthcare was a very important issue nationwide during the midterm elections and right here in MY22 back in 2018. In fact, the only thing that Anthony Brindisi talked about more in 2018 was Spectrum, Spectrum, Spectrum. During his announcement speech back in 2017 for his first congressional campaign, Brindisi made it clear that healthcare was going to be a cornerstone of his campaign, particularly for people with pre existing conditions. I don't agree that uh, taking healthcare away from 20 million plus Americans is the right thing to do or charging people with pre-existing conditions more for premiums. Each and every one of us is just one diagnosis away from being a pre-existing condition. But Congressman Brindisi has often been inaccurate in his characterization of what Claudia Tenney's record was in Congress. As Ms. Tenney says that she did actually support people with pre-existing conditions remaining protected as they were under Obamacare. This is Claudia Tenney just taking a moment to set the record straight. Heart disease and diabetes have impacted my family like so many others across our country. Protecting people with pre-existing conditions is personal to me. I co-sponsored and passed the House bill that guaranteed full health care coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. It's funny, after retracing my steps and copying word for word so many of my excellent bills in Congress, it's curious that Anthony Brindisi hasn't copied my bill that will guarantee health care coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. Two things. One, why are you hyping up your bills so much? We get it. Your bills were excellent and fantastic and tremendous and the best. But the fact that you have to keep saying it over and over again just makes me think that, I don't know, they're not that special. It's funny that after watching me pull in and do this excellent parking job, that my friend Andrew isn't more impressed with me. Are you serious right now? Two, the reason why Anthony Bernissi might not have copied your excellent bill to protect people with pre-existing conditions is because those protections already exist in the law, specifically the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare. Remember that thing you said you were going to repeal and then it didn't actually get repealed? But the reason why Claudia even had to make a straight-to-camera video like that in the first place is because there are questions surrounding just how much she did for people with pre-existing conditions while in Congress. You see... In the video, she says that she, quote, co-sponsored and passed the excellent bill that ensured coverage for people with pre-existing conditions, as the bill that she did co-sponsor, H.R. 1121, flashes on the screen next to her. But here's the thing. The bill 
which she claimed passed, didn't actually pass. It got stuck in committee in the House. It was introduced. She did co-sponsor it. It would have protected people with pre-existing conditions, but it never passed. It just didn't happen the way she said it did. It gets even more bizarre, though, because she actually released two cuts of the video, one of which had that misleading graphic in it, and the other one did not. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, most likely the first video had the graphic in it, but then they saw the fact that it was misleading and decided to make a new cut of the video without the misleading graphic. And if you would think that, you would be wrong. Because after the first cut of the video was released without the graphic, the campaign team went back in and added it in. Look, if Claudia wants to engage on the healthcare debate, there is a smart way for her campaign to do it, but this is not it. It's not smart to mislead people or make false claims. That's not something that's gonna help your case with voters, especially when your favorability numbers are super duper low. Even if the other side is making inaccurate claims, the way to respond to those is not to make even bigger inaccurate claims because then the Berdisi campaign will just make fun of those just like they did in their web series called Throwback Tenny. Protecting people with pre-existing conditions is personal to me. That's why when I was in Congress, I co-sponsored and passed the House bill that guaranteed full health care coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. Yeah, I don't know who's putting them together, but seriously, guys, Bitmojis? I mean, what's next? You're going to have a corporate Claudia fidget spinner? But now the plot thickens because Claudia Tenney, in response to that Brindisi campaign video, tried to justify her misleading graphic by saying she was actually referring to two separate bills when she referred to that one bill. She made the distinction that for some reason she didn't make in her 60 second video message that while she did co-sponsor HR 1121, that that bill was not ultimately passed and instead the AHCA which she did not co-sponsor but did vote for, included an amendment with some of the provisions included in the other bill. But I will also note that the Brindisi campaign is very quick to point out that the language used by the AHCA is much vaguer than that of HR 1121, and PolitiFact stated that the ambiguity of the text could allow for insurers to charge people with pre-existing conditions more for their health insurance, which they could not do under the Affordable Care Act. This is a huge deal because it means that Claudia Tenney did technically vote for a bill that could lead to higher prices for insurance for people with pre-existing conditions, as Brindisi has said time and time again, which arguably could take away coverage for people with pre-existing conditions who can't afford the higher prices. Tenney even said at the time when the AHCA was to be voted on that she was, quote, leaning toward voting no on it before eventually changing her mind, despite not agreeing with all of the bill's provisions. The non-specific language of the AHGA really puts Claudia at a disadvantage, because she did co-sponsor a bill that would have, if passed as she said, shut down this argument once and for all, but it just never went anywhere and turned out to be a largely messaging effort, which is actually kind of similar to another issue in this campaign that we touched upon in our last video. I'm not going to vote to defund the police. Claudia Tenney has repeatedly accused Anthony Brindisi of not supporting the police. And voted with Pelosi to defund our local law enforcement. Now, as we've covered previously on the show, whether or not his vote in favor of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act actually defunded police departments is up for debate. But that's not what I'm going to be talking about. What I am going to talk about is the fact that I actually spoke to Anthony Brindisi about his vote in favor of this bill, and he said this. Sure. Your opponents criticized you for supporting defunding the police by voting for that bill. Political has said that's not defunding the bill. Yeah, but she brings up uh, the ending of qualified immunity as an example of something like that. Well, I've said that I don't agree with all of the bill. I said that we have to work to... So you don't agree with the qualified no, immunity portion? I don't. I've said that there's pieces of it that I agree with, there's pieces I don't agree with. Yeah. But we have to get to a compromise here. Absolutely. So wait, if Anthony Brindisi is allowed to distance himself from a part of the bill that he voted for that he doesn't actually support, then... Why isn't Claudia Tenney allowed to do the same thing? The similarities keep on coming as Bernice co-sponsored a bill like Claudia's HR 1121 that is likely not going to go anywhere in the House. This one called the Defunding Cities that Defund the Police Act and is largely for the purposes of messaging, including an ad from Oneida County Sheriff Rob Mayshall. I've known Anthony Brindisi for 15 years and I've never met anyone who fights harder for upstate New York. And Anthony wrote the bipartisan bill 
to stop cities and counties from defunding our police departments and sheriff's offices. So one can't help but see Congressman Brindisi as being hugely hypocritical here, trying to attack Tenney for doing the same thing he is now being forced to duck and cover for. And look, I'm not saying you have to agree with every element of a bill in order to vote for it, but you should explain yourself fully and transparently to your constituents and not try to mislead the public about what you've actually done and where you actually stand, which neither side has fully lived up to, but I will say that Claudia has been a little more shameless in the misconstruing of her accomplishments. Nevertheless, this is a both sides problem, and looking at both sides critically, I have to say that the Berdisi campaign is more responsible for raising the standards so high and not beating them themselves. They've done this on a number of issues, and that's why I think both candidates need to come out and set the record straight. Hi, I'm Claudia Tenney. And I'm Anthony Brindisi. We, we are running, running in, in NY22, NY 22, but neither of us are perfect. I don't really know where I stand on police reform. Maybe I'll figure it out before the next election, but probably not. The bill on pre-existing conditions that I said I'd passed actually never passed. My bad. Even though I promised to, I haven't stopped Spectrum from raising rates. Congress is hard. And I used veterans to lie about impeachment. Did it make any sense at all? No. But I didn't. Look, I know deep down that just saying special interest, special interest, special interest can't be my only attack on my opponent, but it's just so fun. Yes, maybe I tweeted out a wacky conspiracy theory, started from a QAnon meme about the COVID death toll, and then justified it with more of my twisted lies about the tragic loss of life from this pandemic, but come on, guys. Who hasn't? At the end of the day, neither of us are great. Nope, not even close. But one of us, one of is, us a is a lot better. better. And we and all we know exactly, exactly who, that, who is. that is. So vote for me in my dad jeans. Or me in my creepy pen collection, ha! Ah. Or me, Libertarian Keith Price. Keith Price, there's another option. Paid for by the committee to elect Keith Price. Oh yeah, I forgot there's a third party candidate.